لي لولا أن هديتنا لهذا الحمد الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين آه النهاردة بيسعدني في الأمسية الجميلة الصيفية الجميلة دي آه استضافة أستاذ الدكتور محمد مصطفى أستاذ الدكتور محمد مصطفى علامة من علامات مصر اللي كان عنده رحلة في منتهى الجمال آه ومثل يحتذى بأن الإنسان مش لازم يقف عند خطوة معينة في حياته وأنا دائما وأبدا بقول أن عمر الفرصة عمر الفرصة ما بتصنع إنسان لكن دائما الإنسان هو اللي بيصنع الفرصة و و وينميها و ويضع لنفسه الأحلام والطموحات بلا حدود طالما هو عنده إيمان دائم بقدرته الذاتية وبقدرته على الانطلاق إلى أقصى قمم الجبال إلى يعني أقصى الحدود ولا يرى ابدا امامه حدود ولا ولا عوائق ولا 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 طالما هو عنده القدره الذاتيه وطالما ما زالت عينيه تبصر وما زال يقف على قدميه. اصحاب الايمان القوي بالله سبحانه وتعالى يهبهم الله قوه ذاتيه رهيبه وينطلق الى اقصى الافاق ومنهم الاستاذ الدكتور محمد مصطفى اللي بعد ما شاء الله الله اكبر ما خد الدكتوراه من بنها قرر يعني ان يثب الى القمم التي هي اعلى من افرست وهي قمم العلم عموما وقرر ان يعتريها اوف كورس طبعا هي هي دازنت ويت فور اوبرتيونيتي بس هي كليفرلي اند باورفلي كاتش ات اند ميك ا جولدن اند فاليبل اوبرتيونيتي فور هيم سيلف تو تشينج هيز كارير تو تشينج هيز انفايرمنت اوف وركينج بس Uh, uh, really, I am believed that he is supported by two great women, his uh, woman, his mother, and of course his wife. So uh, let me with you salute for Dr. Muhammad, mother, and Dr. Muhammad, wife. Uh, I, 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 I really saluting both two great females, pushing him for his uh, uh, for his uh, uh, great uh, step. to be forward, to uh, catch, uh, and to uh, uh, cleverly uh, be uh, the, above the uh, scientific committee of uh, African regional anesthesia. Uh, really welcome, Dr. Mohammed. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce you. Uh, our moderator today is my great colleague, my kind heart, Dr. Wissam Sultan, the assistant professor of anesthesia in Ulmanofia faculty. Uh, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, It's a great honor to be with you tonight as a moderator of this interesting scientific meetings Thank you dear Professor Dr. Safa for giving me this opportunity and uh, uh, thank you again because you are hosting such eminent names in our field every week to share their knowledge and experiences with us. You have the capability to do it perfectly. Actually, I don't know how, but يعني, we will know later, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> uh, I, I want to say uh, some words in Arabic uh, regarding uh, what we are doing. إذا كانت زكاة الأموال لها نصاب وتقدر ب 2.5% فإن زكاة العلم ليس لها نصاب وتقدر ب 100%. Tonight it is a great pleasure to introduce our star. He started his journey from Middle East Faculty of Medicine, Banha University, where he is belonging and ended up in Near West in United Kingdom. Uh, I'm assuming that it was a very long and hard journey, but through it, he succeeded to have a lot of credentials, starting by MBBTH in medicine and surgery, uh, Master of Science in anesthesiology, PhD in anesthesiology, fellowship of, uh, 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 fellowship of Royal College of Anesthesiologists, uh, a Diploma of European Society of Anesthesia, uh, European Diploma of Regional uh, Anesthesia, Masha'Allah, I would like to introduce our dear uh, uh, doctor, uh, Muhammad Mustafa Muhammad. He has a lot of uh, positions. Uh, he is a consultant anesthetist in North Cumbria Integrated Care Foundations Trust in United Kingdom, 
lead of trauma and regional anesthesia services, lecturer of regional anesthesia master degree program in University of East Anglia in United Kingdom, head of scientific committee of African Society of Regional Anesthesia, director of Cumbria ultrasound course, which is accredited by the Royal College of Anesthetists and Regional Anesthesia in United Kingdom, member faculty of airway and regional anesthesia courses in United Kingdom and Egypt, regional anesthesia and the block club teaching director in the trust. Uh, his topic is about safety in regional anesthesia. What are the updates? Actually, uh, and fortunately, it is my field of interest, uh, and it would be a pleasure to share you this very uh, uh, fruitful presentation. I am assuming and expecting that, which will be full with valuable knowledge and update. Uh, welcome, Dr. Muhammad, and the, the floor is yours now. Dr. Mohammed, Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Safa, and thank you very much, Dr. Hussein. I'm just trying to um, to share my screen. I think it's uh, it just need to be. Yeah. Here we go. That's it. Excellent. Right. Can you see the the, the presentation now? Is that okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so, thank you very much, Dr. Safa. Thank you very much, Dr. Hussein. Again, it's. Um, uh, I would say what what it's really really great words. First of all, it's uh, I'm I'm really, really it keep embarrassing me. <laughs> Just I'm, I really I'm very very thank you very much. It's some it's it's something which is um it's um, uh, um uh, it's it's my honor honestly just to be with you all today and um, and um, uh, um, Dr. Safa especially she's an exemplary person for um. Uh, what I say, motivating others, motivating other people, like Dr. Hussein mentioned, uh, how she's doing that. She's, you can't imagine the amount of work and communication, and she is always active, and she's always on on the case of um, uh, promoting and uh, developing and spreading science and technology for all. Uh, it's not only for 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 you, you uh, just for all of us, because we at the end. Um, all of us, we're learning from each other and we, we're gaining all these type of experiences and um, uh, learning opportunities, which is quite interesting. And uh, this is basically the true uh, scientific behavior. Right. So um, <clears throat> the topics tonight is about the safety in regional anesthesia. And the safety of regional anesthesia is one of these important topics. And I personally know that out of the technicalities, and, and uh, when we say the technicalities, uh, which is all of you, I'm 100% I'm sure that all of you are keen to listen and to know more about. However, the safety is a fundamental and is a pivotal step in doing before all of you guys doing any type of procedure, any type of nerve block, before you're sticking your needle in, in someone's body, um, either you're doing a neuroaxial like a spinal or epidural, or you're doing even a simple nerve block. And um, I think it's it's something which is all of us would be really interested, especially when it comes to doing a lot of nerve blocks. The most important part of your um, safety aspect is, um, I would say, do not do the nerve block because you actually want to do the nerve block. So if you, have, if you have this type of experience of freedom of doing a procedure or doing a type of nerve block, um, you, don't, you, just, you don't get the patient and you're starting to um, um, doing a, the procedure because if you've seen a video or you just do the block because you want to be competent in doing the, this type of block. It is, the safety comes, it's not only from yourself, it's safety for yourself and for the patient and for the environment and for the teaching uh, culture as well. So um, if, for example, if I'm doing um, <clears throat> a type of nerve blocks like the femoral nerve block or uh, fascia iliaca block for a patient with hip fracture, you have to understand before doing this type of block, what the indication, what is the contraindication um, am I really a competent and safe in doing this type of procedure in this patient? What's the outcome? 
So is this patient really, really get benefit from doing this type of block? Is he is the is my block or my procedure? Is it really going to benefit this the patient? Is it making any difference after doing the surgery? If, for example, if this patient having a DHS or hemiarthroplasty, and I've done the block, is this really the block making a difference in reducing, for example, the delirium, in reducing the DVT? Is it reducing the blood loss? Is it any evidence? of doing that, or you're just doing the block before you, because you are just good at it and you want to be a more and more competent and you want to show off in front of everyone that, ah, yes, I'm doing a lumbar plexus, I'm doing a paravertebral, I'm doing um, a type of um, very advanced block for this patient. And the, you, you at the end, it, is, it becomes unsafe and unnecessary. And it's always important to think about this type of uh, procedure because it's, it is at the end, if you if you doing this type of procedure for your patient for your patient, you have to consider that this patient is yourself, and this is what I'm always almost always consider. So this is what I always always um, <clears throat> think of my patient like this is my mom or this is my dad or this is my sister or brother. Do you have to accept the idea if someone is still learning or he's in the process of learning and he wants to learn in you? Or you're doing something which is unnecessary and it causes harm. No, of course not. So you are not going to accept that. Exactly the same. So you don't do this because you just you need to do it. So this is quite important. And it's quite important also because the, the whole idea if of none causing harm, it is the main hub, is the main bulb of our um, uh, professional um, um, attitude and our career. So uh, us as a physicians, us as a doctors, we do treat patients and not causing harm for them. So we do this thing which is really make a difference. I, I don't. I, I'm just going to prolong at this point here because it's 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 makes it makes a sense for my presentation. So if I don't know if you're aware about the latest guideline for patient with anticoagulation in hip fractures. And we've been over the last 10 years, we, we, we are thinking about um, doing um, neuroaxial or spinal anesthesia in patient with uh, dual antiplatelets or on clobidigrel or patient in warfarin or type of nerve block, which is actually in most of the time, especially these days, it doesn't allow us to, to do a freedom of spinal and epidurals in this type of patients. And, and here it comes the research, and here it comes the, the 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 good evidence. And the good evidence, when it when it started to search on the instance of the nerve block and the instance of the complication related to the nerve block, sorry, um, complication related to the spinal epidural with anticoagulation, it found it was found that actually the instance is, if we consider it as a risk benefit, it's not as exactly the same risk if you are avoiding a severe or serious complication like patient who are having a severe lung problems or even severe chest disease. In other terms, if you are giving anesthesia in patient, for example, is 85 years old, severe COBD and having a severe problem in his lungs and you are quite striving, quite very, very keen to do spinal, and this patient is in dual antiplatelet. Now the new evidence, the new science says, when you do the risk benefit, is it safe? It is safe to do this in consideration into the other complication. So it's always it's important to think about the risk benefit ratio and how this all your type of procedure how is going to make a difference for your patients. Now going back again, and and I think it's unsurprising for all of you that when it comes to the <clears throat> complication and safety region anesthesia, what amount of legalities, what's the, when it comes to the people who complaining about you, when you're doing a, a problems related to the brief and blocks or related to the neuroax anesthesia, it's, it's not surprising that we find that the region anesthesia is in the top. And this is actually, again, is a concept of what we're thinking that things like the obstetric, things like the cardiac, uh, things like you know, uh, the general anesthesia is becoming the top. No, the region anesthesia is actually is in 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 um, in the top of uh, legalities according to the claimers two thousand and seven. Um, 
I just will stop here with very interesting, I don't know if you can see it properly, and this is actually um, 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 a claim, is a claim, is a complaint. So someone has doing a shoulder surgery and while he's doing the shoulder surgery, he came to the hospital in the, in the, in the morning and one of the um, anesthes anesthesiologists or anesthetists have seen the patient in the morning and he consented him for having a general anesthesia with interscaling block. And unsurprisingly that this anesthetist was <clears throat> um, was thinking that he, he would do the peripheral nerve block, he would do the, the, the interscaline um, in, in, um, in a good way and he has seen some videos so he wants to apply it. So what's been, what happened is this patient actually suffered from nerve injury after the operation and he did an official complaint against this, or again, is the hospital to be investigated. And the investigation shown that uh, the anesthetists who done this, or that you can, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you can read exactly what's been written in the report because I, I've just, this is just like a photo. Um, I've taken this photo, um, um, staff photo just from the report. So you can see here actually uh, been, been written that uh, the claimant, the, the patient, was admitted to the hospital for surgery to be performed by as recorded and the claimant received the three injections. So there's a trial of the interscaling block three times. And, and then the patient at some one of these injections, he did complain of shouting electric-like sensation in one on his in, in one of um, in one of these injections. And the report after the investigation by the court, it's mentioned as you can see here, that while the interscaling block is noted to have been performed in operational record. This cannot have been performed correctly and likely lead to damage to the suprascapular nerve. And it's not noted that, that there will be to be a form of peripheral blocks to the suprascapular nerve and the claimant as the patient was not consented in respect. It means that you, you have done a block or you have done injury to the nerve, which you, you, you shouldn't suppose to, to block. And the suprascapular nerve could not have been damaged by competent, performance, so it's extremely important. So again, this is very important. So the courts did mention that you have done, maybe you've done like five or tens of interscaling block, but you are not still not expert, not competent. Not competent means that you are you performing, you are fully aware about the anatomy, you're fully aware about the pseudo anatomy, you, are, you have been adequate trained to perform this procedure and you're aware about all the complications. Complication do happen for all of us, including all the experts you can listen about. But the main difference is that when you're doing this procedure, you know that this can happen and you can document it and you can investigate it and you can um, ask the patient after the operation that he may suffer from one and two and three, and then you can have a bit of more investigation, treatment, and ways of management. So that's the difference. But don't you, you, you do, if, if you just done a procedure and then you expose or you just leave the patient for um, uh, subhanAllah, this is, not, that, this is not the case. So this is very important just to, and I stopped at this point here to get, get you aware about how is important is the safety. So. <clears throat> right, so again here, uh, we were starting to, uh, uh, so I, I, I just gathered some of the points which is related to the safety. It's not conclusive, it's inconclusive. All this list of safety issues related to the regional anesthesia, it's endless. You can, from here and now until tomorrow, I can, I can get a lot of presentation about the safety issues for regional anesthesia. I just, but I just hit the points, hit the, some of the points which is, could be relevant um, to us in, um, and, is, and, and it's more common to happen and it does happen until now. So the first thing to happen is the wrong side nerve block. <clears throat> and the wrong side nerve block is actually, um, is one of these complications, one of these safety concerns, which is, I know that it's quite rare, but it's significant debilitating complication. It's one of these annoying complication, one of these problem which has happened when it happens, it's extremely frustrating, is disappointing for yourself and disappointing for the patient. 
is not only because you've done a wrong side block, because it's, you are actually exposing a healthy nerve. So if you're doing the block for the other side or the faulty side, you're exposing the nerve, a healthy nerve or the healthy side to a toxic substance, which is a local anesthetic. The local anesthetic is a toxic, it's not an antibiotic. The local anesthetic is not a vitamin, it's a toxic substance. Plus you are exposing <clears throat> the patient himself to wrong side, wrong side surgery. So if you've done the block in the wrong side, you actually, you going ahead and you're going to the, to the, to the theater. And this blocked site could be uh, a human um, evoking factor of doing the surgery in this wrong side, which is catastrophic. And a lot of things which is happens uh, along a lot of barriers. And these barriers when it's been what we call it deconstructed. These barriers where they are deconstructed, this lead to this problem. And there are several factors. You have the human factors. It is a ways of long time between. There's a lot of factors here. But how many times all of us has been distracted in theater while we're doing your block or you're doing your spinal or you're doing your epidural or you're doing your sign and he's been distracted by someone who's coming to the room. Hello, Ahmed, how are you? Um, is this the second case? Uh, can you can just keep, khalas, uh, khalas, uh, we have to go, have a long list when we, we, keep, we have to keep going. Um, the patient himself is just speaking with someone. Um, they have like a two or three colleagues around you and you, they are just speaking in nonsense. We're speaking in unnecessary conversation about much, which is Ahli and Zamalek, it was yesterday or, uh, what was the the like the, the atmosphere or the weather or someone going to Sahel or whatever. So these kind of things, which is you keep, and this is called the human factors. This is a thing which is keep you distracted and keep you <clears throat> not aware and not fully, fully focused on which side you are doing and what the procedure you're actually doing. <clears throat> and then when it comes also to this, this procedure here, uh, there is a lot of, um, uh, I would say um, a lot of um, 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 uh, safety alarms, which has been raised, and this is, and, 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 and I know you're you're uh, you're fully aware of it, and this is something which is um, um, came with the with the w, uh, WHO uh, surgical sign-in, the WHO surgical surgical sign-in is actually um, emphasizing the health or safety issues uh, for all this type of stuff, which is you need to do before you're doing any type of procedure and you get uh, eliminating what we call the uh, eliminating the, the, the human errors. The human errors, someone who's coming on the day of operation or you're doing to your work and this happens to all of us, it's not Abe, it's, not, it's nothing wrong with you. A lot of us just come on the day of the, of the work and you are not having adequate sleeping, you have a problem you're thinking, you have a problem, <clears throat> for example, you, 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 you didn't get your breakfast, you, you have a bad morning. So this affect and have a certain bad impact on your, um, in your work and your um, attention and your focus in your, I said, which make the, the wrong side block happens. <clears throat> so that's what the campaign, and I think you are all aware about it. It's called the Stop Before the Block. And this is a catchy name, which is born um, <clears throat> to prevent or you, you she just kind of routine checks you have to, to implement it and um, to, to, to just to, to avoid any kind of this human problems happens. However, it's still happening. Unfortunately, it's still happening. And that's again stimulated and irritated a lot of other hospitals, a lot of our um, 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 uh, places where there is um, kind of other safety issues, things like individual guidelines regarding something called mock super block, something like these stickers. If you can see the sticker here, and these stickers, you are <clears throat> stick it in your the needle or you stick it on the syringe. So keep reminding you of doing the stop before the block or you checking your, your, your side of injection before you're doing the injection. However, the problem is still happening. Unfortunately, the people are still getting wrong side block in everywhere in the best hospital in the with the best expert and he says i know a lot of the best names you can know about and the the, the wrong side block happened with them so this is can and this is the most recent updates and the most recent update is um actually this happened this year and and uh, um, uh, quite a 
couple of years back, there was something is called, um, I don't know if you were the health safety um, investigation branch with um, another organization it's called Safety and Anesthesia Liaison Group with a lot of uh, researchers and a lot of people who are interested in safety. They make a campaign of safety and investigation, what we can do. And they came up with another catchy name, something nice, which is you can hear it and you can look about, it, and it's called PrEP Stop Block. So what's a PrEP Stop Block? And this is a quite recent thing to, uh, to happen. So the PrEP Stop Block uh, is actually, after they have done the Stop Before Block, they found like this is uh, okay. So we've done the Stop Before Block and the problem is still happening. And they investigated that they found like they're still, although that you're doing the WHO surgical sign-in and, and you do the stop before block and they still you doing the wrong side injection. And they found that, you know, they found that most of the time there is a lot of distraction between you preparing for your block and before and you your performance actually. So before <clears throat> just before you're doing the block and you're needling. And you 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 are you're preparing your patient, you are checking the sign, you're checking the site. You get your drugs ready, and then someone comes in and he tells you, Ahmed, uh, um, is this the second latest case or first case? Uh, you know, oh, this is second case, and you still and you speak with someone else, and then you done the block. So in this check, so they are reducing all this lag or reducing this all these gaps. So what you are actually doing in simple terms, you are preparing the local anesthetic, and then you give it to someone else. Here in this country, in Europe and in the Gulf, and, and I know there's some of you, or maybe there's a lot of uh, another nice job, it's called the anesthesia nurse or anesthesia technician. So the anesthesia nurse or anesthesia technician grab the drugs, so he will not allow you from touching the drugs without doing the sobe for work. This is the main hub of this HX. And I hope it will, um, um, it will uh, solve the problem, but who, who said? Right, so this is a stop before block. So you you have to be um, you have to be guys aware of these problems, and and this is one of the things which is um, actually uh, it's, it's annoying and it's really completely depressing. The second problem or the second issue here is I think uh, uh, maybe you are all uh, aware of it, which is called the nerve injury. And the nerve injury <clears throat> per se it's um, it's one of these complications, one of these safety, safety concerns and mishaps, which we are all as anesthetists and we are all as anesthesiologists and technicians are really concerned and afraid from happening. So when you do the nerve block, especially uh, things when touching some sensitive nerves, like you're doing the interscalene block or you're doing the suprascapular nerve block, or sorry, supraclavicular nerve block, I'm affected by the court case, or um, the femoral, you will try to avoid needle contact to the nerve, to avoid nerve injury. So how this happened? Is this really affected by your needle? Is this really the instance or the instance of nerve? Is it just benign? Is it really malignant? Is it really complicated? Is it happening a lot of frequently? So the reason, the, the, the answer is we don't know. So whenever you have any, whenever you guys having any sort of question in your, in your head, you have to, we have to stimulate the true science. And the true science come from the true research and true research coming from true randomized control trials it means that you are randomizing to see if there is a control and there is um, um, the, the treatment group and you see which one is different. And this is in a true research can give you in a large population or a large number of um, samples. This will give you um, a true answer or just a, a, a quite um, important, quite um, potential good answer for your research question. So in this case here, can you do, can you randomize patient to cause needle contact? So you would go and then inject inside the nerve and then another group you don't inside, then that never happened. It's not unethical. You won't really happy about someone get the needle and go, okay, uh, Muhammad or Ahmed or Maha or um, Amira, you, can you can you give me a consent for doing research and injecting local anesthetic inside your nerve and see if it's hair or harmful or not? So this is not said. So it's it's unethical. That's why we don't know the true instance. It's all about the case series and case reports. We don't have the 
the actual figure. And again, it's the, the, the instance of nerve injury is compounded by many factors. And these factors could be surgery. So if I'm having someone in labor who had a pterolid and you have, she has in the dotomy position for one or two hours, and then you've done quadratus lumborum block or you've done tab blocks, and then after the operation, you have a femoral nerve injury. What most, most likely to be the factor? Is it going to be the local anesthetic or your nerve block? or it's most likely related to the surgical positioning. So this is a true question. So there is a compound. It could be the block. It could be the other factors. So there is a lot of other compounds. So that's why the instance, or what's why we, 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 we cannot answer this question whether the, your block is actually um, uh, a true um, neural harmful agent. We don't know. We don't know the answer. So how to mitigate it? The, 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 before we mitigating the, the, the nerve injury or before um, reducing the, the, the nerve injury, we, 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 I'm just going to give you some, some small bits about the anatomy uh, uh, of uh, the nerve. Um, and it's quite important when you're doing the nerve block. So my colleagues, the nerve from the physiology, it is contained motor, sensory, and autonomic. Every nerve fiber is covered by what we call the myelin. And the myelin is actually, I would we'll call it asphalt. It's, this is asphalt, which keep the conduction and, and action potential in an extremely faster conduction rate. And also there is a designated blood supply. And designated, as you can see here, if I'm, I, can, I don't know if you can, see, this is a designated blood supply here. And this is quite important. Yes, you have a blood supply inside the small nerve. And this is actually one of the problem which happens uh, from your nerve injury. So any compression, any type of injection of large amount of local anesthetic inside this compartment can cause compartment syndrome, can cause impact on the blood vessel. So it's not only about your needle touching the nerve, okay? Also, there is a Schwann cells, which you keep regenerating the nerve fibers and causing, um, uh, it's a kind of uh, these nice friends which you keep side by you, just trying to avoid if some nerve injuries that you keep regenerating it. And every nerve covered by a connective tissue fibers or connective tissue layers. And the first connective tissue layer here is the endoneurium, which covers number of punch of single nerves. And then when these punch of nerves being collected together as a magma, as a group, so this can, co can, can, be, con can be surrounded by another layer of connectivities called the perineurium. And then you have the epineurium at the outside. So this is like a three protective layer. And this can give us an idea how important is protecting the nerve because you have a lot of protective layers to avoid it from injury. Your nerve is extremely important as this nerve is not only for sensation, it's not only for the, for, for the pain, um, it's for other functions like the, the motor and, and, and autonomic function. And this <clears throat> unsafe, unsafe procedure or unsafe performance of a nerve block can, can um, have a lethal and harmful effect with your nerve leading to uh, a significant, uh, significant uh, long-standing problems like, um, like autonomic and uh, motor blocks. Again, <clears throat> although that we are, uh, this is again another, uh, 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 this from the Nizora, and this you can see here that this is a physical, this actually by true electron microscopy, you see the intraphysicals, the endoneurium, the perineurium, the epineurium, this is a sciatic nerve. And um, um, another picture here, we're showing the needle. And, 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 I, and I'm, I'm personally, um, I know that, um, um, the hypothesis of needle contact the nerve injury is the most common uh, is most commonly uh, coming to our minds and it's, it's it's something which is always you know flashes in front of you that yeah this is this is my needle touching the nerve but it's other factors as i mentioned the local anesthetic itself what you're injecting is toxic to the to the nerve the hypoperfusion if you have a patient with hypotension of low blood pressure this can affect the nerve can can cause nerve injury compression Pressure, surgery, tonicky, all these factors can cause a nerve. It's not only about your needle. And <clears throat> I know that the 
intraneural injection idea. So the idea of intraneural, this is something which is was, especially on, on 10 years back, this idea has been challenged um, and several times, but um, to just to produce an, if, an effective, effective nerve block. However, the advocate, the advice, all of us, please guys, please, please, please do not put the needle inside the nerve. Do not put the needle inside or in close proximity to the nerve. Do not again put the needle inside the nerve. Try to be as much as you can away from the nerve. Try to protect the nerve. It's quite important. <clears throat> and you can see here avoiding neural insertion. Actually, nerves like the sciatic nerve, you, you, you actually, it's not only about the endoneurium and perineurium. And perineurium. These are other connective tissues. These are more and more protection. And you can have another a connective tissue that's like the paraneurium. And the paraneurium, although that um, a lot of people, including myself, I'm, I'm trying, especially when I do popliteal sciatic. You're trending to put your needle, as you can see here, in this area here where you're injecting local anesthetic goes there. But the new evidence again saying that it's not, it's not actually here in this picture, but there's another connective tissue above in this layer here. It's called the epimesium, another connective tissue. It's called the epimesium. And what why researchers should <clears throat> have noticed this connective tissue, because we actually, when you're injecting local anesthetic here, this, if you're going tracing, you rope up and down, you can find the local anesthetic in these planes. So again, if you're doing analgesia, why are you injecting here inside the nerve? Well, you can actually injecting in this part here, just like a one, two kilometers from the nerve. So it's quite distant, it's quite away from the nerve, very good from the nerve. So try to avoid, try as much as you can. Again, also the same happen for certain blocks like the interscaling. The interscalene block, um, <clears throat> now there is, we, we tend to put a lot of, I, I personally being trained for doing the blocks uh, using uh, blind anatomical landmark and nerve stimulator. We have a lot of going uh, <clears throat> with injecting large volume. Uh, and we can, we were doing the nerve block, we're doing the, all these have been trained in, in, uh, in one of the, Interesting centers actually in, in Europe is called in, in Zurich in Switzerland and the big center. And the, the people there were injecting 50 ml of local anesthetic. And imagine that you're doing interscaline with 50 ml. So everyone, you know that he's done an interscaline with having like a big balloon of <laughs> just at the side of the neck, which can cause actually it's like a compressing the airways. Yeah. And okay. Um, so how else we can we can use to avoid um uh uh, nerve injury, and this is quite also important. So the ultrasound, also the ultrasound um, actually is um, uh, made a major difference as an innovation in reducing the nerve injury. You can see the structure you are blocking. And I am, as I mentioned, uh, we, we used to do blind and we used to do a lot of uh, anatomy and nerve stimulator. I remember myself when I'm doing an infraclavicular and I can't imagine now these days how I would do the infraclavicular block, passing the traveling the needle through like six, seven centimeters in the tissue planes and the muscles. And then you start to find where the nerve without seeing it. So the nerve, the ultrasound make a huge difference, a huge, much dramatic difference. Also things like the nervous stimulator. And actually I'm one of these guys who is still using the nervous stimulator. A nerve stimulator is not being used as a sole technique to locate the nerve, but it's used as what we call and as an airbag, another safety, second safety issue. So if you're doing the ultrasound, I will set the, the current of the ultrasound, the nerve stimulator to 0.3 milliampere, 0.2 milliampere. So it, it's, it's proved that um, if you are, if you're anesthetic and contraction uh, with less than 0.2 milliampere, that means that you are intraneural. So it's quite healthy to use. If you can, if you have it, just use it. Also the short people need, although that they are catastrophic if they gun into the nerve, but Argucum, please guys, do not use spinal needles, or do not use short or cutting edge needle when you're doing the blocks. The block or the nerve block done by um, specific nerve or short people needle, insulated needle, which is safer 
and healthy and is, a, is something which is friendly to the nerve. So if you're gonna cut, if you imagine that a cutting edge needle or spinal needle or quinky back hook and you're approaching the nerve and you cut it or you can just having an injury, it's catastrophic, it's not good. Also things like the pressure monitoring devices and we will have a bit of talk about this uh, later on. And the pressure monitoring device is one of these innovation which made a big difference uh, um, uh, in reducing the, the nerve injury by uh, uh, limiting the pressure uh, to certain limits or certain amount. <clears throat> Another more updates here, which is, um, I don't know if you, if you have seen this before, um, it's about the, um, uh, what's called the Sephira. I don't know if you heard about it. And this is, I, I'm, I'm quite sure it's not, it's not yet available in, 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 in Egypt. Um, the Sephira is called safer injection. Actually, one of the uh, uh, Egyptian anesthetists was involved in designing this um, in um, uh, Dr. Ahmed, I think he's working now in, in Emirat, um, in Abu Dhabi. He, uh, it was in a team in Oxford, and this is a kind of uh, innovation which used to limit the pressure. So this is actually a self-injecting, I, I, I have a nice video later on, but just is a kind of tools which you use to limit the pressure. So if you're exceeding the pressure uh, while you're doing the U block or you're doing the injection, it will stop you from doing that. So this is a kind of also um, <clears throat> good um, safety uh, issue here. Right. Next is the uh, local anesthetic and the amount of local anesthetic. And, 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 I, and I think you all of you, you, when we're trying, and this is the best, the, the, the good thing about the, the ultrasound. The ultrasound is, um, is not, has not all, only um, um, used us to just help us to, 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 um, to see the nerve, but also reducing the local anesthetic. As I mentioned, we, we used to do 50 mil here. Imagine that. Now we are using five mil and six mil and you're reducing fantastic effect. You can, you can do a weak shoulder with just 10 mil of local anesthetic. So this is the, the thing about, because the local anesthetic, it's just a toxic substance and try to avoid it and try to avoid the concentration. Do not use much higher concentration unless you're really needing it. Avoid using, adrenaline is quite good, but do not avoid it in bulvascrized areas because also of the designated blood, su blood supply um, inside the vessel, which is uh, you all see. And again, the patient himself, and the patient himself can be prone so to certain nerve blocks. So when you're doing your nerve blocks, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, 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 healthy habits, I would say, uh, something doing a block in a weak patient. I know there is still there is no uh, legal requirement to do the block sleep or awake, but it's good. It's 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 good medical practice. It's a good. Thing when you're doing the original anesthesia, either a spinal or a dural, or you're doing your peripheral block in a weak patient. Why? Because in simple terms, you know how the block is working or not. You know if you are touching the nerve. You know you remember the the court case I've just mentioned, why the patient has shouted. So if you're documenting it nicely and you 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 figure out the problem, you will solve it, or you try to manage it, or you try to investigate it. So a weak patient, in a weak patient. Also, you you will you will you will be completely focused in your block. So imagine that you're doing a 95 or 90 years old grandma uh, with a hip fracture, and then you are teaching a trainee or a resident. So your resident wants to learn the femoral nerve block, or you you you, you wants to learn the fascia iliaca, and then you give the patient general anesthetic, and then you all both together traveled. To the groin of the patient, sitting there doing a block for the nerve, and you forget about the blood pressure, and you forget about the airway, and you forget about how bad is the patient going, the patient outcome of the operation being affected by the drastic blood pressure changes and the hemodynamic problems which happen, like bradycardia, like the heart. I've seen cases where there is near arrest while you are focused in the block. It's a human factor. It's our nature. When we are interested in procedure, you will figure out, you forget about other things. So always do the awake patient. Always do your procedure in a awake patient. I'm personally, personally, I get the patient 
involved with my block. So I, I ask them, if I'm doing the block, I ask them to see the, the needle and I see the nerve. And he, I, I told them, look, look to the picture, see how the needle can approach your nerve there. He would be happy, actually. He would be distracted. You see, oh, oh, this is the needle and this is very clever idea and this is very clever science. And he will be, thank you. So it's quite important, it's quite nice. And, um, so this is the sort of nerve injury, this sort of thing, which is we are all, especially when it comes to the patient, also important to the risk factor. There are certain risk patients, patients who are risky, uh, things like um, patients who are um, having sort of body habitus, obese, obstetric patient, extremes of age, uh, patients who are having diabetic, they, they can be prone to nerve injury. Uh, also surgical factors, things like direct trauma, stress, compression, tourniquets, hematomas, abscesses. So all these factors, it's important to investigate because the, the reason why it's important because you can actually solve it easily. So for example, so for example if, you have, if you have a certain um, nerve injury or suspecting it, and you have the, 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 the main cause is... Um, abscess or hematoma, you, the whole thing can be solved by just um, evacuation of the hematoma. If the nerve block is the main cause of nerve injury, the good news is it's mostly good prognosis. So you don't have a serious nerve injury which leading into permanent nerve injury related to your nerve block, unless you are completely inhumane, damaging and transecting the nerve. So this is this is good news, but it's again something to make us aware that we have to be very careful. So this is a nerve block. So we finish now the 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 the, um, uh, the wrong side block. We finish the the nerve injury. We we're coming to the the main bark of the triad, which you again you all of you need to. And then we have a small tiny things. Look at anesthetic toxicity and look at anesthetic toxicity. It 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 needs a, a, a separate lecture. I'm not going to rep I'm not going to go through the details. I'm just going to highlighting some of the main technical aspects. Again, the 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 look at anesthetic toxicity. It is still happening, although that the ultrasound have reduced a lot because you are reducing the volume when you're using the ultrasound. You see where you're injecting your local anesthetic, but still, unfortunately. The local anesthetic toxicity is happening. Why is it still happening? Because actually, you look at anesthetic toxicity is not about reducing the is not about the volume, it's not about um, injecting the local anesthetic inside the vessels. It's related to the the plasma concentration of local anesthetic. So, for example, if you have a patient who is renal, or patient who is elderly, or patient of obstetric or obstetric. And then you inject the, the local anesthetic, and unlikely this local anesthetic <clears throat> reach the plasma in, in a quick way, leading to high plasma concentration, like a shooting high plasma concentration of local anesthetic. That's, this can cause local anesthetic, even if it's, if it's low volume or below the safety um, um, issues. Um, so there are certain, there are certain. Um, Types of local anesthetic toxicity. It's not the local anesthetic toxicity. It's not like what we are actually thinking is a systemic toxicity. Is what we're thinking. There's other forms of local anesthetic toxicity. Things like uh, anaphylaxis or local uh, um, injury related to the additives. Also things like the methemoglobinemia, which is I, I know you all of you related to the some of the local anesthetic, which is commonly nicely used. Brilocaine is one of these friendly nice agents which we use it until now. So uh, again, methemoglobinia related to the otoludine. So these all are types of local anesthetic. However, what we keep keep as a scary movie is the systemic toxicity. And the systemic toxicity is one of these problems which is unfortunately can have a serious um, uh, high mortality and morbidity and mortality and can cause uh, death to your patient because of something which you could think that could be a beneficial for them. And the, the toxicity here is um, uh, from the local anesthetic does have a lot of symptoms and signs and 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 um, I know this is um, uh, it, in the in the textbook you will you will read a lot about um, the stages of local anesthetic things like when you're having two stages CNS and the cardiovascular which comes first cardiovascular CNS which agents 
can cause cardiovascular CNS. Um, however, from my personal experience, I don't know if you have the same, I have two cases of local anesthetic toxicity and I can tell you how hell is the patient with having local anesthetic toxicity and how is sweet when you are using the antidote when we come speak about it later. So the two cases which happened with me actually were, uh, you cannot, you cannot, uh, so if a local anesthetic toxicity happens, and I think it, 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 you would definitely seriously having the same situation. First, you will have a denial. It's not happening. No. Look, I said this never happened with me. No, 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 no. It's not look at this. something else. This, this patient maybe have some anaphylaxis. This patient having some, you know, you're giving someone an initial anesthetic and having vagal stimulation. So denial. So you always deny. That makes the things progressing and getting worse. And most of the local anesthetic toxicity, actually, it's a mixed. They will not come as sweet as you expect that you're okay. The patient will tell you, uh, doctor, uh, I have a tingling, numbing, and it and meal for my tongue, and uh, uh, you know, this never happens. It's a mixture of symptoms. It's a mixture of signs. There will be some cardiovascular CNS. However, the most irritating warning sign you need to be aware if you've done your local anesthetic, if you've done your block, and after your block to happen, you'll find a heart rate high, tachycardia. If you find the patient start to hallucinate or you're irritated, irritable or agitated, that's a local anesthetic toxicity. This is the starting of the local anesthetic toxicity. Actually, it, it gives you these signs of CNS excitation. CNS excitation followed by depression. Excitation. Excitation can affect the cardiovascular signs, uh, same, uh, centers leading to tachycardia and hypertension in, in some of cases. And this is what happened with me. And then you can find, and so one of my cases, one of these two cases, actually he was a prisoner and he was a big muscular. And I can tell you it's a hell like, a, it's, it's like one of my worst day ever I had in this patient. How you can control him. He's agitated, he's like mad. He's like mad people. He's just aggressive. He can punch you. He can hit you. He's just like, you know, when you, when you someone who is just crazy and you get severely agitated. It's not seizures. It's agitation. He's just fighting you. It's a completely different person, suddenly. So what you do? You treat the signs and you give the antidote. A simple answer. Treat the signs, seizures, bradycardia, tachycardia, uh, things like this, and you give the antidote. I'm sorry, I'm just coming back <clears throat> for this. It's, it's again, is something which is related to um, uh, the sites of where the local anesthetic toxicity happened. And you can see here, there's a percentage, but again, it's happened everywhere. It's happened, whatever the signs are. Yeah, there's some risk factors, but the tips is what you need to know about, you have to be very conscious of the dose, local anesthetic. Use the lowest as much as you can. Fractionate your injection, so aspirate and inject. So use fractionating injection. Um, use the epinephrine. So if you use the epinephrine, not in the distal side, just as a part of mixture of your colloquial anesthetic. So that gives you a sign. If you have an increase in heart rate or blood pressure, that means that you actually, your local anesthetic is, go is gone to the vessel. And use the ultrasound, of course. And the type of local anesthetic, I, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm quite um, sure that um, um, about the, the, the type of local anesthetic itself. And the type of local anesthetic is, um, I know that, um, uh, um, I'm quite sure that it's still in, in, in the Middle East and still of a lot of countries, including uh, Egypt, that uh, we have a quite good uh, um, uh, um, quality of local anesthetic, which you can use. I do advise you guys, if you don't, you, 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 as much as you can, I know that there is a quality, uh, there is, sorry, the cost, which makes it difficult, but try as much as you can using levobivacaine and rubivacaine. If you are using the bubivacaine, by the way, my, my two local cases were adrenaline. So it's, uh, well, sorry, it was uh, lidocaine. But if you are using bubivacaine, just try to be very careful because it's quite toxic to the myocardium. It's quite toxic, high toxicity. Levobivacaine, rubivacaine is quite good. They're having vasoconstrictors, like, like the same idea when you're injecting your local anesthetic or you're injecting your adrenaline. So it is quite important to use and quite safer. 
<clears throat> there is another something it's called the CVS and CNS ratio. And this is one of the things for the pubervacane is about two, uh, for radiocaine seven. And what does it mean? It means that you, it's the dose required to, um, to produce cardiovascular collapse in relation to the CNS excitation or CNS seizures. So for pubervacane, as you can see, is, if it's two means that you are the, actually the transition period between the two cardiovascular CNS signs is quite low. It's not, it's, it's, it's quite, there's no any lag. The lidocaine, you have a bit more time to uh, between the two um, uh, two signs. Site of the book, again, uh, sorry, uh, the dose of local anesthetic and the dose of local anesthetic, you have to be uh, uh, aware of it. So there is a lot of institutional and countries, I imagine that there's a lot of countries difference on, on, on the, the, um, the dose of local anesthetic. It's, um, it's um, but just try to be as much as you can, you are affected by, um, uh, whatever the dose of local anesthetic you have to be, especially with the bubivacaine and with lidocaine and all that. <clears throat> the area of vascularity. So if you're doing a type of block, things like the vascular type of block. So if I'm, for example, if I'm doing uh, a rectal spiny ASP block, it's different than when you're doing infraclavicular block when you need approaching the axillary artery. If you are doing um, things like saphenous nerve block, it's much, much different when you're doing it at the canal where you approach the needle close to the femoral artery. So close proximity to your vascular structure is important because you can injure the vessel. And actually also you can have like a bit of systemic, uh, also systemic absorption. So it's quite important, this area of high vascularity and effective safety. Also the patient factor. There's a lot of vulnerability here for patients like obstetrics, where uh, extremes of age, uh, things which is related to um, the plasma protein. So you have this local anesthetic. If we are having um, a, um, a plasma protein combining, you know, the are carriers, if this is low, that means that the local anesthetic, free local anesthetic is quite to be high. This makes the, the, the local anesthetic toxicity is going to be higher and higher. Okay. Now moving into the local anesthetic. What's happened in the local? What are the theories? of the local anesthetic toxicity. And the theories of the local anesthetic toxicity actually, it, it's completely still under, un understood. So it's not well explained, it's not well known, but the theory is, it's all about when you're giving the local anesthetic, it tends to go, it's called the limit thing theory, which is in, in, in a simple word. So but go to the sodium channels, which is responsible for function of, the heart and the brain and the cells and the block it. So in Bawaba, in, in Bawaba, in Masula, responsible for the act, for the function of the organ, the organ has to go and block it. So just close it. So the, the organ doesn't work. Or <clears throat> it can cause, go to the, mito, the, the, the one on the right is called the mitochondria. So this is again, the most acceptable theory and it's, Poisonous. The local anesthetic is poisonous to the mitochondria. And what the mitochondria cause? The mitochondria, in a very simple term, it's the you generate the ATP, the energy for the cells. So it's asphyxiating the cells. It's asphyxiating the cells. Killing the cell. Okay? So there is no energy. There is no oxidative phosphorylation inside the cell. The mitochondria. So the local anesthetic causing that. <clears throat> so what do you think could be the management? What, what could be the management? The management is something which is, could be actually solving this problem. And actually, if we think that this is, the local anesthetic go and block these gates or block the sodium channels. So we need someone else to go and grab the um, uh, local anesthetic from these gates. Chill. Had to be ruh, he had the local anesthetic from the cell, from the gates, and take it off. And this is the fat, the lipid. The fat, the whole, for the first time, it's very useful. The whole, some. This is the inter lipid. It's, it's fat. The fat goes and causing what we call, um, it's, it's engulfing, or the process of what we call is, um, uh, Capsulating. Capsu yeah, exactly. Yes, who's, who's, who mentioned it? Usam. Oh, Dr. Usam. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, it's the same. This is the word. So encapsulating. Thank you very much, Dr. Usam. Encapsulating 
encapsulating the 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 um, uh, um, the local anesthetic and help the free the nerve and generating ATB and this ATB can uh, can again um, reduce the the function retain the function or <clears throat> the 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 ATB or the the the, the mitochondria or the lipid thing through the 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 the, the interlipid what it can cause it can generate or fat or the, reprocess the, the fatty acid oxidation inside the cells and generate more energy so that the organs return back to normal. So what are the most two common organs affected by asphyxia? Are the brain and heart. They cannot tolerate hypoxia. They cannot tolerate reduction of, on OTB and energy. That's why they are strongly affected. So what's the antidote? What is this lipid? This is the thing which is was <clears throat> done on over and over in, in, by um, research with Weinberg and uh, on, on a sheep models. And then there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> trials again, which is uh, until it's proven that the interlipid is, is a safe and a sheep, it's sh very cheap. I don't know if you just let me your response guys, if you have the, the, the interlipid, it's, if you don't have it in the hospital or you don't have it in any place where you're injecting local anesthetic is a crime. Really, because it's very cheap. It's something which is not, uh, expensive and it's, it's, it makes your life much easier when you have such a case. So this is what happened for me. It's immediately, it's just reserving your, um, <clears throat> a patient who's dying to normality. And this is one of the reversible cause of local anesthetic. And what you're doing, this is a guideline here, but as, as a matter of fact, what we do, you just take a syringe, 50 ml of syringe or syringa, maya, khamsin, and you take like 50, 100 mil and just give it your patient, just immediately, okay? And then you can look into the guideline, okay? So I'm not going to go to the steps because it's actually, it needs a, a, a bit of more uh, uh, time for this. Now we're moving into, after the local anesthetic toxicity, I'm just moving to another factor. This is a small tiny thing and we'll finish. So um, we're lo looking into the equipment. There is some innovations and innovation in regional anesthesia, it's been implemented or it being produced just to reduce or produce more safety. And one of the things is NRFET. And I'm, I'm not sure if you if you are aware of the NRFET. And some of it's, it's still not legal requirement, but if you are not, if you don't know, you have to know that the, now there's a lot of centers in the whole world, they are mandating the use of the NRFET. And NRFET, it's specific, um, as you can see here, um, the color of con which connect to the syringe <clears throat> um, or connect to the needle is identical and is just only fitting into the nerve block needle. So you cannot use this syringe into a cannula. And this is a sequence of um, accidental intravascular injection of local It happened and it's still happening. So some problem happened, you're running continuous catheter and one of the nurses or one of the doctors, he came and just grabbed this local anesthetic and you just put it intravenous, which is quite catastrophic or the same. Exactly the spinal epidural catheters, lock needles, all now it's called NRFET. Another thing is about the Sephira. And the Sephira is one of these tools, which is I personally use it and I personally like it. So the Sephira is, I will show you the video, is a kind of a self operating. So you press on the red green, the, the, the machine give you local anesthetic. You press on the orange, you aspirate. And if there is a pressure increasing, it gives you a red. It means that it doesn't allow you to ever. So I'm just going to bring you quickly this video here. This, you're pressing, this is the pressing with the green, this is the yellow one. So this is with the deep regular. And you are pressing with your, with your leg, with your foot, with the green side, foot bedel. So you give, look on static. This is now you can see here now it's red, means that you're having high pressure. Okay. I make it make sense. So this is called the Zafira, which is, I think uh, it's been um, distributed now by Vigon. Maybe within this next year, it will be available in Egypt. 
also the needle and a lot of needle um, navigation and needle contact injury using the laser and needle using navigation within the ultrasound, all this innovation, which is uh, quite good just to avoid um, enter new injection and make it safer uh, for your blocks to be performed. Right. Infection, and I think this is going to be uh, the last. So when you're doing a procedure, when you're doing a spinal epidural, the most important thing you need to, you need to, to, to confirm that you are not transmitting infection or you're not conveying an, an infective organism to your patients. How are you doing this? Doing it with a clean procedure, aseptic technique. However, <clears throat> still the, the single injection nerve block, it, 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 did show, it was shown that it doesn't have a serious infection for complication, but still is a meticulous. Do not use, please do not use the probe on the patient without cover, even with the gloves. I used to even without, if you have a problem with the supply, just use the gloves. Um, always have a bit of more uh, barrier between the patient and between the probe because this probe, 100% in all center I've used, it's been used for, it's been used for different patients. Some patients fall in the floor, they have a lot of organs, it's not clean. Let's have a, a procedure of cleaning. Um, also important to know that a lot of our disinfectant actually they are toxic to the nerves. So you have to, when you are using or you're using the chlorhexidine or alcohol, you have to keep it for about three to five minutes to dry until you're doing the procedure or doing the block because especially when you're doing the new exit because they are toxic to the nerve. Of course, you know, if you are using the chlorhexidine, there is no superiority of the 2% over the 5.5%. And the continuous catheter, when you're doing continuous catheter, I know that it's quite different in institutional, national, international organizations. Some of the countries, they're still using a full gown. In the UK here, they're using the full gown on a full aseptic thing. Some of the other centers using just a gloves and um, gown, and, uh, sorry, masks. And um, so you don't, you don't have, you don't wear full, full gown. Um, the, the continuous nerve block catheters, the, the, um, uh, although that the inf infection is the most common complication, but still colonization is high and, and uh, I haven't seen personally a serious infection related to that. The gel uses, there is a specific sterile gel and try to just try, if you have it, try to use it. There is a still conduct, if you don't have it, especially with catheters, start to use conduct media, things like the, the, the ceiling. So you can use a ceiling to insert or you can see the nerves, or you can see the ultrasound. Or even your antiseptic, like chlorhexidine, you can use it and you block your, put your probe. You still you can use it as a conductive media, especially for uh, catheters. Okay, and you can see this is an uh, uh, interesting literature review from um, uh, <clears throat> Toronto, Canada, showing that there is no difference when using the probe film. I don't know if it's um, available in Egypt or not. <clears throat> right, uh, this is the infection. I think that's, that's uh, uh, yeah, the last thing, the documentation. So this has been added today. So the documentation, the last bit, the documentation, always very important. Argukum, please, please Argukum. My colleagues, residents, everyone, whenever you're doing any type of procedure, document it. It's not only for you, it's safer for you and safer for the patient and safer for um, whoever doing this, um, anesthetic to this patient. He will know more about <clears throat> what you've done and what the technique and what's the, the procedure. Plus, if you've done a proper documentation, if some problem happens, you will know what the, what's the problem because all of us doing a hundred and thousand of cases. So after a year, after um, if someone came and saying that there is a claim or there is against you, you're saying that you are done a nerve block injury or done a hematoma beside the nerve block uh, um, cord, beside the vertebral canal hematoma. Uh, so you will know that, yes, I've done this because the patient as well is anticoagulated. So you will protect yourself. It's a legal requirement. So documentation is a major safety issue. So that's it really. And I think that's all. The last thing um, I'll say, uh, I'll say um, and this is again one of the things which is um, um, one, one, one session 
as you, and, I, and I think this is a safety thing, which is a learning and teaching. <clears throat> Dr. Safa, and you, uh, and 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 in your position, you uh, as a professors and assistant professors and residents and lecturers, keep teaching, keep your teaching, your teaching, and your education, and your uh, being um, keen to to teach small residents and trainees. This is a major safety. This is a, something which is safer for yourself. You will keep yourself updated. You will know more better. If you teach, you will know better. You will go and search and your, your resident will know and you will, he will be aware of everything. So this is the safety. So teaching and education and, and, and know more and being with all everyone around you, just knowing what's the most recent um, advances in teaching education is quite, it's quite important as a safety issue. Just finishing with this video, which is actually, I know, I, I'm not sure whether it's you, you have seen it before, it's quite uh, interesting. It's, a, it's kind of needle training. And you see how, how the technology has reached into <clears throat> beyond further miles by, so this is called needle trainer. And a needle trainer actually is a kind of uh, simulation uh, which, we are, which you, you, you can use to train your residents as a safety issue without touching the nerves. So this is a, a simulator for the needle. So actually I'm not, this is myself, I'm putting the needle, but the needle doesn't penetrate the skin. So you can see here. Okay, just can you show the picture now? Show the picture now. So the needle actually can go in. So without being in, the needle can, can you can actually see the needle going inside the tissue. So this is a simulation. Which actually, uh, yeah. So this kind of stuff, which is uh, um, the old science now and all the research, and 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 this is another idea just for for all of you when you're doing this type of things, which is um, it's not only about uh, I want to do femoral block or I want to compare certain type of anesthetic to another. It's all about safety. So thank you very much. And this was a, the, 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 the end of that present. I'm sorry, it's just been long. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you, much. many thanks, many thanks, Dr. Mohammed. many thanks. Really fascinating and a great lecture. Streamed well, very easily and very mm. fruitfully. Thank many thanks, so Dr. Mohammed. Thank you very much, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for your uh, very uh, 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 fascinating uh, presentations, very nice and uh, uh, helpful uh, presentation for our colleagues and safety comes first as we know um, and you know during our residency we got very proud when we have any uh, operation under uh, sole uh, peripheral nerve blocks yeah uh, yes. at that time yes. at that uh, yes at that yes. time we, we actually we we didn't know what is the hazards what the complications might happen uh, to our patients and after that when we getting uh, older, we uh, started to uh, to change our mind setting. Yeah. Uh, when when you will when you will uh, have to do this block for which patients, under which circumstances, what is the the, the impact of this uh, block? Is it useful? Is it necessary to do it or not? This is how to uh, uh, deal with your patients nowadays, and uh, uh, this is what we are uh, uh, calling. Tailored anesthesia plan. You have to uh, make uh, an anesthesia plan for your patients. Uh, what's useful? What might uh, might cause uh, uh, danger uh, danger for for your patients? And as we know, the peripheral nerve injury. Uh, uh, however, it is still uh, rare. Uh, it might account two to two point five per ten thousand, yes. which is which is uh, might be also uh, biased because we, we don't know not all cases are uh, reported, not all cases, are, uh, we, we know about it, uh, but this is the, uh, what we are uh, reading in the uh, meta-analysis and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the trials, the, uh, the RCTs, or randomized control trials, but once, once happened, it is uh, very devastating to the patients and this, the, the anesthetist and to the surgeon for everyone. Even if it yes. is a small, yes. it is not not uh, 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 complete nerve damage, but even so, it is a very devastating. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, I know there's yes, no, yes. Uh, no, no. We no can enough. summarize, we can please, we can, we can, we can summarize, please. Uh, we can do a notification here. Yes, peripheral nerve injury will not interfere the patient life, but it will interfere the quality of life. Yes, yes. yes. True. You are True. right, Dr. Asafa. Uh, and as you said, Dr. Mohammed, there is no enough uh, randomized control trials, trials to, uh, to investigate uh, that. But uh, I think there is uh, uh, trials uh, over animals. Yeah. Uh, and they are, uh, they, there's a lot of uh, trials over animals. They are uh, differentiating between the, um, the intraneural and intrafascicular uh, blocks. Yeah. Not, not all no. intraneural, it means intrafascicular. Intrafascicular, exactly. yeah. yes. It, intrafascicular block, it is uh, very dangerous. It is accompanied by high pressure during injection. That's that's what yeah. uh, uh, they said, um, yeah. and uh, also it, using as you said, using the peripheral nerve simulator with the, the ultrasound, it is uh, it is it might uh, help, uh, but even so, with uh, with with the nerve simulator, there is another study uh, uh, when you are stimulating the nerve at 0.5 milliampere, you are putting the the ultrasound to see where the needle. Yeah. And in, in, in some cases, they found the needle intraneural. Yeah, true. Even, yeah. even if it is, yeah. So yeah it thank is you very much. much. No, uh, um, I'm just, uh, I just want to um, uh, read to Sam. I just want to thank you personally because you are, you are touching some of the uh, whole points because true, 100% true, 100% true. Uh, you, um, so um, about the point, it's the current uh, or the amount of the current required to protect the nerve. Uh, it's unidentified. So we do say, yes. some studies say 0.3, some 0.2, but this is for healthy individuals. So it's a healthy, healthy individual. Doesn't yes. mean even if I have one milliampere, no switches, that means that you are away from the nerve. There's some patient yes. which is the vasculopath, patient with vascular disease, diabetic, uremic patient, and you don't get any contractions. So yes. that is fun. that's really important points. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. The other thing uh, about... Um, uh, about also what you mentioned because it's quite uh, interesting to see how how you are following um, uh, the, 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 the the true terminology of um, uh, physiological the, uh, detoxific the, the toxicity of the local anesthetic uh, or yeah. incapacitation or, or a way of how the local anesthetic is really really affected. Yeah. Um, this is uh, this is extra extremely quite important, but yeah. Any, um, uh, I think I think it's important for 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 every one of us. It just as a matter of uh, whatever, even the science. If you if you think yourself how how this is going to affect the safety of my patient, how this is affecting my um, uh, the, the 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 patient um, outcome after the operation. This is this is absolutely the most important point. And this is what the most common. There's a lot of scores now. It's called the, the recovery score. How this is. The recovery score means that you how the patient is going actually to be doing. We've done a lot of blocks. Now I, I'm I'm personally I'm, I'm I'm very excited about doing blocks, but sometimes you know when you go and do these blocks in, in the patient and you found that there's no difference in science between you doing the block and you doing local anesthetic by the surgeon. So you have to you have to follow this. You don't be excited because you want to do a block. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Um, uh, and uh, I have a question. It was. You know, uh, as you said, the local anesthetic um, the systemic toxicity, uh, actually it is related to the exposure of the nerves to the local anesthetics. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So uh, it, 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 is it matter to use uh, high concentration with low volume versus uh, uh, high volume or uh, large volume with low concentration? So uh, the, the answer is, is um, Really, uh, uh, Sam, it's it's all about how many how how the the the, the amount of local anesthetic is, is you are injecting. So you can inject ten milligrams in in twenty mil or thirty mil volume, and you can inject these ten milligrams in a in a quite couple of mils. So uh, it's all about how how amount of local anesthetic. But personally, again, if you are doing a block for analgesia, I will just try to use the, the least concentration as much as I can. And I tailor the volume according to what I need. So, for example, if I'm doing intraskeletal block, 
So I mean, I really don't need more than five, six mil. And this is actually, you will see it and you will figure out when you're doing the block, you'll find that you are satisfied with the, with this, with the, all your spread of local anesthetic around all types of nerve, all type of nerve roots. Yeah, yeah. But in other things, there are things like when you're doing an infraclavicular. So if you've done an infraclavicular, you need a high volume of local anesthetic to cover the whole cords and the whole thing. So this is kind of interesting. I cannot cover the posterior cord and lateral cord and medial cord separated by connective tissue by five or 10 mil. That's what you need, the, the volume. But in a, the general rule, <clears throat> as much as I can, I try to reduce the amount of local anesthetic in context of efficiency of the block. So I won't really jeopardize the, um, the local anesthetic in efficiency. If I, if I have, for example, uh, if they ask me for doing a weak shoulder or a weak shoulder operates a list or a patient who having amputation and I want to do him under sole block. So I will be very keen that this block is working. So I just give yes, amount yes. or I give the amount of local anesthetic is quite high, yes, whether sir. the volume or the concentration. Right, right. So this so, is so tailor, allow me, allow me, yes, allow me that we can see that the type of operation and the length of operation and the need for the post-operative analgesia will influence our volume and the concentration of local anesthetic yeah, injection, Dr. Yes. Muhammad. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you allow me to see that? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, okay. The, the, okay. The uh, Mohammed Abdul Shafi has a question with him. Please invite him to uh, to ask his question. Abdul Shafi, oh, have a very Muhammad. nice question. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, thank you for the very nice uh, lecture. Really interesting. Uh, actually, there are, there are three questions, if you allow me. So, the first. Dr. Mohammed, but. Uh, quickly. Yes. <laughs> no. I, can, I can't Take resist. I can't resist asking and being curious about more yeah, details about the scenarios of the local system. Okay. System. Okay, go ahead, Dr. Mohammed. What happened with you? Uh, yes. Especially. especially <laughs> Uh, you are so experienced and you are so expert and also the patient was as you said he was fit and healthy so i, I can't I, I if you could kindly let us know more details about how this happened in him about the local anesthetic toxicity cases yeah the other question is a uh, scenario i faced in the trauma list uh, and it, it it was argumental all the time controversial between controversial between the doctors patient coming with a trauma ankle trauma or hand trauma and there is a syndrome. Yeah, nerve injury. And okay. then the analysis test is say, oh, no, I can't give because if he has a, a nerve injury because, because of the trauma, uh, then I can be accused of this and I don't want troubles. Yeah. Uh, the last question was, I saw a practice which uh, was the routine practice in one hospital here. Uh, it's a very big regional anesthesia center, by the way. And they were, they were giving uh, spinal anesthesia first and then giving the nerve block which I was not very happy because uh, as you said you need the the patient to to protect himself from nerve injury uh, I'd like to know your comment about this practice is it, yeah. the, the rationale was avoiding too painful in, injections or scratches but would you go for spinal then at nerve block and lower limb uh, surgeries or you will give the block first and the spinal later on thank yeah. you well, I, this is very good questions, Mohammed. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's, uh, um, so the answer for the first case about the local anesthetic toxicity case, which has happened to me, it was using lidocaine. And uh, fortunately, fortunately, uh, it happened in the era where I used to use the blind technique and the nervous stimulators. Not wasn't wasn't using the ultrasound. So you have to be uh, aware of this. And this is um, in the two cases, but don't don't take it like a. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a nice block and you try to use it, don't, don't keep it like a key off, it's auxiliary block. Both were auxiliary block and lidocaine is quite toxic combination. And um, uh, as, you, as, you, as you can imagine, when you, when you are uh, doing an auxiliary block using nervous stimulator, and, and, I, and I'm not sure um, what's your auxiliary or Dr. Wissam and Dr. Um, um, uh, Safa, I think you are aware that we, in, the, in like 15, 20, uh, we used to give a large volume of local anesthetic and uh, close to the vascular structures. And we, uh, we, it's not only about local anesthetics, about other complications, things like nerve injury, even pneumothoraxes. So you, you get pneumothorax, uh, you know, from infraclavicular, supraclavicular, using the blind technique and the nervous stimulator. So this happened, well, two intraskeline block. Uh, one of them was a prisoner, uh, and he 
uh, was of nightmare. So what, exactly what 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 was was done actually never forget about this case. So you're injecting um, uh, when um, um, uh, after injection the the local anesthetic, um, um, and surprisingly it was planned as a planned uh, as a as a as a sole anesthetic. Uh, I can't remember exactly what was the volume, but we used to inject large volume of local anesthetic. And you remember if we if you're doing it blind for example, we used to do something it's called <clears throat> transarterial approach, where you're passing through the artery inject and you come back again and aesthetic some nerve responses, which is makes the, the likelihood of nerve block injuries quite high. Um, so the patient himself, as I mentioned, is all the, the, the having seen his excitation. Uh, it happened within immediately within three, four minutes after the injection. And one of the patient was a cardiovascular science. So you have a tachycardia and then you get a CNS. And the, first, the Seguin prisoner was I know that he started to punch, started to become nuts. So Magnol again, and we just started to uh, uncontrolled, and he was very young, muscular, and he removed the cannulas, and this was bloody and messy. And five, six people just lying on him, trying to control him. It's not because of seizures, because of his crucibility and because of his being uh, uh, irritable and agitated. So this is about the local anesthetic. About the ankle block, if you're doing so. The compartment syndrome or pre-existing nerve injury, if you are having a patient with pre-existing nerve injury, it's not an absolute contraindication for doing the nerve block. And this is the bottom line. There's no absolute contraindication for doing nerve block in compartment syndrome or patient who suspecting compartment syndrome. And this is again, it's not a fight. So if you're having this sort of discussion, this happened even, even everywhere in the best place in in, in the world now for regional seizure or even trauma, it happens. And some of surgeons, they do not accept. And they have to accept the idea that actually at the end, they are looking after this patient after leaving theater. So they are keeping the patient for months and months. So he, ha he has to have to some sort of, you know, if he is worried about uh, compartment syndrome, if there's a patient coming with a fresh trauma, I am personally, I don't confront. I don't go in discussion and no, I just need to do the block. That's fine. So we have a, 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 a kind of mutual, respectable uh, discussion that we, is this patient really need a block? If this patient actually, uh, uh, is there any alternative tools? If the patient, for example, having, is an abu opioid abu user or IV drug user, and you really, really is, is, you're striving for the block, just in discussing with the surge surgeon, well, we'll, we'll, we'll do the block with low concentration. There's a lot, a lot of tricks you can use to avoid uh, nerve injury avoid the um, the um, the thing with compartment syndrome. The compartment syndrome, um, if you are, if you do on the block and the, and the, there's a patient high likelihood for compartment syndrome, the pain, although there's a good sign, but it's not the conclusive um, uh, um, eminent sign of the compartment syndrome. Uh, uh, the pain, which is I don't know if you have seen the pain from compartment syndrome, it's unbelievable, intractable pain. It's from the ischemic ischemia. It's not related to the somatic pain. So whatever the block is you give him, it will be having a lot of pain. So it, that's why I may I might use uh, a low concentration. So if the patient is existing and I really I'm striving to get a block for this patient, I just use a low concentration. Uh, I, I'm, I might ask the surgeon to put some pressure monitors, and this pressure monitor actually is very cheap, and you can use a pressure mon monometer just to avoid to keep gauging the the, the pressure. If the patient coming with a nerve injury, things like the humerus, surgical neck humerus, is a pre-existing radial nerve injury or pre-existing um, common fibula relating to the fibula injury. Uh, oh, again, if you are a really a big need for this block to be done, um, just document it and speak to the patient. Speak to the patient, speak to the surgeon. This patient documented that he has a nerve injury and you have to document this. Um, Personally, what's about my person? I will try to my, my uh, as much as I can to I'll try to avoid the block for for patient with existing nerve injury. A spinal block and um, and doing the nerve the nerve block. <clears throat> um, uh, that's a very good question again, Mohammed. So it's a, a spinal anesthesia and um, doing a nerve block on a patient who can doesn't doesn't feel. Um, it sounds unhealthy, it sounds not, not good. So if you, exactly when you do the patient sleep. And I, I, and I, and I personally, and I never in having the intention to do that. And I, I personally never done this and I never seen someone doing it. So I never do the spinal and then I do the block when a spinal or 
and because I don't avoid the two injection, the, the block in the block injection is quite non painful, but um, it's it's not it's not the conclusive answer that it's 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 no it's strong uh, practice it can happen and actually the the reason why I'm we, usually for personally in 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 in, in my trauma patient for fractional neck femur what I do actually I do the nerve block first. And then I do the spinal, the other way around. So I don't do the spinal and I do the nerve block. I do the nerve block because this is actually make the patient feels better. So I can position the patient for spinal or I can be, position the patient for the general aesthetic. He doesn't feel pain. And then I do the spinal, not the other way around. So I, I, I personally, I don't advise about doing the spinal and the nerve block. And I don't advise about doing actually anything um, without feeling the nerve, unless you are really, really needing it. But it's again, I can't say that this is, um, yeah, absolute mistake. It's, it's something which is, um, I'll try to avoid it. It's, it. Some people, they have a variable grade of experience. Some of the old, old, old dragons, the old dragons, anesthetists or the old generation, they are quite very competent in doing this and they refuse the idea of changing their practice. So they will go and do it They'll say, no, no, no. They will, whatever you tell him, no, no, it will be fine. So it's fine. Or well, just it's unless there is a strong evidence saying that this is yeah totally totally agree with you, Doctor Muhammad. Uh, I have a comment over the the if we have the compartmental syndrome or argument between the anesthetists and uh, uh, the surgeons regarding if happen if nerve injury happened, who is yeah. responsible or uh, anesthesia related or surgery related? Uh, there, there there are a lot of tools now can uh, detect uh, where is the injury. Uh, yeah. The EMG, yeah. the MRI, yeah. they can tell us uh, what the injury are related yeah. to, to what. Uh, so this is uh, good, and uh, it's uh, it's better also to avoid if you have any alternative. You have uh, it's it's a good it's better to uh, avoid the injection uh, peripheral nerve injury yeah. in in patient already uh, have a potential uh, injury. Yes. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's. Uh, so please, uh, so uh, please, we say, please, Prof. Muhammad. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the safety of uh, regional anesthesia in already uh, neuropathic uh, patients who have neuropathic pain, mm -hmm. peripheral neuropathy, and the safety of uh, uh, any, any type of regional anesthesia with a neuropathic pain. Uh, sorry, Dr. Safa, just can you uh, say the question again? So, is it, um... Yes, if we have a patient with a peripheral neuropathy, yeah. Is it safe to have a spinal epidural nerve yeah, block for him? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we can. Well, we always do. We uh, it's uh, we do routinely uh, um, uh, regional anesthesia, which is quite good for patient with vasculopath and patient with neuropathic pain. <clears throat> um, we we um, personally, I don't know if uh, a person we do. Um, I do uh, sciatic catheter for even patient with ischemic pain and uh, for amputations and. Uh, and the um, the quite uh, the quite uh, quite actually uh, uh, good just to reduce the uh, the type of chronicity. So the the they don't uh, they don't um, uh, evoke the transformation of acute pain to chronic pain. Uh, and surprisingly, also it does have an effect on <clears throat> the ischemia and neuropathy. Um, uh, most of the vascular patients they are neuropath and they are vasculopath and the yes there is um, there is um, there is an, an element of double crash injury where you can. Uh, local anesthetic to the local anesthetic and um, uh, the needle or the nerve injury can cause a serious problem on the nerve. But again, as I say, the answer is that it's it's a risk benefit ratio. So you have always to to this to see if this the seriousness again is the the value. Uh, and, uh -huh. You know, it's something which is could be, uh, but it's not again. It's happening. Yeah. 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 So, but uh, what about what about the 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 demyelinating diseases, Doctor Muhammad? Is it Multiple also? Multiple yeah. sclerosis. Yes, yeah. so the, 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 uh, also the all neuropathic and all the systemic demyelinating diseases, um, um, things even like the, the, the complicated ones with uh, the acute problem. Uh, uh, honestly, really, Dr. Wissam, um, I've used um, uh, a number of cases, just few of them, uh, where the local anesthetic proved that there's no contraindication. It can be used um, as safe as possible, and it's quite. Uh, to be honest, okay. it's just the general original anesthesia, and 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 I think this is one of the things which is makes in in um, and one of these the, the categories which is actually changed the general anesthesia, the original anesthesia becomes now a, as a main um, uh, basic 
component of training. It's not, it's not an, an, I don't know if you, if you heard that the, the region is either in, in some, uh, <clears throat> in, in forms of training, it was a bit of more optional thing. Now it's compulsory because it's the safest thing. It's something which is not only safe, it's also environmentally free, environmentally friendly. Right. Something which is, it proven it's, it's quite good. And uh, I'm personally, I don't know whether, I don't be convinced, but that the, pay, the region is easier is, is the same as general anesthesia for delirium and cognitive function. I don't think- uh, there is, You know, there is a, a, a recent studies say that- Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's, there's no difference I, between general and regional anesthesia and- uh, They say that there's no- delirium. Multiple sclerosis, you mean multiple sclerosis with him? The, no, and, and the delirium. No, no, and delirium. And delirium, both to cognitive dysfunction. Yes, go, uh, yes. So it is it's my coming question. Please, Dr. Muhammad, yeah. uh, what about the usage of uh, regional anesthesia in patients with um, uh, delirium, uh, dementia, uh, incomplete uh, communication, uh, children yeah. like that, or, or young youth, patient yeah. with cognitive dysfunction? What about yeah. the usage and the, the your approach to manage uh, such patient, please. Yeah. So, um, uh, so they are fantastic. So, <clears throat> patient who are having a cognitive dysfunction or dementia, or um, um, uh, and this is uh, uh, it's, it's not Parkinsonism not for oh, or even Parkinsonism. Yes. Uh, uh, just just today we have a very severe patient with Parkinson. With the Parkinsonism, actually, you know, it's interesting. You're giving local anesthetic and you're avoiding the 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 the, the the harmful um, opioids and harmful agent, which can affect and can interact with all antiparkinsonian drugs. The dementia patient approaching is quite challenging. I know this is quite difficult. And I found it yes. only not only difficult in performing the A block, it's also difficult in um, securing or um, having the, the catheters and the continuous catheter because they drag and they draw and they take everything yes. out. But yes. uh, they're up, uh, approaching the cognitive patient or the dementia patients, um, usually, if it's not, if the patient is not psychologically manageable, so um, at least you, you can have a distraction technique. So what you, uh, uh, if someone just elderly having dementia, you start to, to have someone else distracting them or uh, they are not agitated. So you can do the block. And actually, yes. interestingly, that the blocks, when yes. you do the block through this patient, yes. become much calmer because the pain is, is, is a very evoking factor for um, uh, acute delirium and acute cognitive dysfunction. If the patient is still, if the if you're approaching the patient, patient unmanageable, if the patient it cannot so whatsoever, allowing you to touch him. So the other ways is still you can um, you can do some sedation or you can give them some uh, form of sedation just to um, to do the block and um, uh, um, and uh, keep it manageable. Yeah. So you can allow the attendance of his caregiver to attend with us oh, in OR. Oh, that, thank you very much, Dr. Safar. Absolutely, the caregiver, it's really the, the, the real way. So if you have a caregiver who is really um, get used to the patient and he is uh, manageable, I will just straight away, just bring him with the patient or bring him in the, in the recovery. Or uh, this is the most uh, successful um, way of uh, managing delirium. And it's okay, it's okay. Thank you. Uh, I just have a comment that uh, regarding again the local uh, anesthetic toxicity. Yeah, we, we we have to differentiate between direct intravenous uh, injection, accidentally or uh, not, and uh, absorption from the surrounding tissues. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, the, the, it is we are injecting around the neurovascular bundle. bundle. So uh, yeah, okay. so uh, every peripheral nerve has uh, blood supply and accompanied by. The blood, uh, the vascular bundle. Okay. Uh, I I uh, I remembered two cases also as you, Doctor Muhammad. I have a case of um, intravenous uh, regional anesthesia uh, with the lidocaine, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the uh, the tourniquet deflated uh, accidentally, uh, yeah. and the patient immediate developed uh, uh, seizures and loss of consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, this patient was saved uh, by I uh, and, and use uh, the, like general anesthesia and put the airway uh, protected airway and after some times he got uh, well Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, but, but the the other patients it was uh, under uh, uh, so sciatic block for uh, for a knee surgery and after injection the 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 amount uh, up and down in the psoas uh, region and the sciatic. Uh, he started to uh, to complain from tingling, and then after that, uh, 
he start to be agitated, as you said, excitatory manifestations. Uh, uh, but it happened, uh, uh, it happened, uh, uh, yani not immediate, but yeah. within 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 few minutes. Yeah, uh, and that is uh, the 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 uh, difference between the direct intravenous uh, uh, injection and the absorption from uh, the surrounding tissues. Yeah. Uh, I have a question in that. We know all that the uh, the the uh, the level the uh, the dose of uh, local anesthesia, the toxic dose of local anesthesia, it was uh, three and seven in lidocaine with adrenaline and two two yeah. for uh, bupivacaine uh, uh, with and without uh, adrenaline. Yeah. Is it uh, the same for um, for regional blocks like uh, uh, peripheral nerve blocks or? for uh, interfacial blocks or whatever these blocks is it different because you know this yes. i know i know this toxic doses is for for iv maybe for iv or for uh, for uh, interfacial or inter uh, yani like peripheral nerve blocks is it different no um, it's not it's not different it's just, it's, it's exactly so it's there is a maximum volume or the maximum um, tolerable volume of local anesthetic concentration which is you will you would really allow to exceed Whatever the block you're doing, so uh, if you're injecting uh, inside the vessel, and the, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a, even with a continuous catheter, it's all about the rate of injection. So if you, if, for example, if you're injecting like a one shot, so I wouldn't really, I won't really um, um, try to exceed the the safest amount, that's two or three milligram per kg. Mm -hmm. However, in in a continuous infusion or um, over a day, you you would allow because it's lower rate and you have a low concentration. So the streaming of local anesthetic we're injecting on over the day is going to be a, a little bit more um, uh, tolerable. However, it's still the, the maximum exceeding low um, uh, doses, things like 400, which is uh, the magic number is 400 milligram uh, per day. So if, you, if you're having exceeding this continuous fusion, that means that you are exceeding the local amount, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm asking these questions because we ha there is uh, some surgeons, plastic surgeons, with, with, uh, who they are doing liposuction. They are injecting tumescent, you know, the tumescent anesthetic uh, solutions, and they said in our uh, in our text uh, it is a higher higher not 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 a bit higher. It's a very higher uh, range of uh, uh, local anesthetics can be injected during these uh, uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually, uh, we, we didn't see any uh, toxicity from uh, this uh, higher doses. Uh, maybe because they are suctioning it again uh, after some time, so it is not uh, uh, immediately uh, absorbed. Uh, but I, I, I don't know, is it actually like that or uh, is it a wrong practice from them? Um, to be honest with you, Dr. Wissam, I have no experience with the lipid suction, but presumably I may, I may Think about the theory because it's the 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 how the local anesthetic or any drugs is is be, become more distributed to the according to the vessel rich group or lipid rich group which is making it quite poorer in uh, absorption rather than you when you injecting it in a, in a proper tissues. Oh. But um, I personally and um 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 uh, I haven't done much really cases of liposuction or um, and but in the yeah. general rule I'm I'm. I'm 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 not I'm 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 happy about um, in in the old surgeon in different parts of the world they are the worst inject of local anesthetic and they inject mm -hmm. and use anesthetic in a proper bad way and ineffective to be honest just few of them they just properly correctly injecting the local anesthetic even with the infiltration um, they just if you notice them. <laughs> Yes, 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 you are right. <laughs> yes, you are right, Prof. We have, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we have, we have other anesthetists to have another way for injection. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, I, I told them like that. Yes. Uh, please allow me, Prof. Muhammad. Uh, we have a question from the floor about the usage of uh, dual antiplatelets. And if a patient have a coagulopathy, uh, please summarize for them the safety of using or doing peripheral nerve blocks or regional anesthesia in those uh, type of patients. Okay, that's fantastic. This is a, a need a different lecture, but it's um, <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, but this is a quite uh, that's quite very good. Uh, yeah. Because actually, I don't know if you there is a there is a there is an, a, a, a consensus just been released last week, and uh, I'm I'm happy just to send it over to you. Just last week, we have an, a, a collaboration between the European Society of Regional Anesthesia and the European Society of Anesthesia and Intensive Care. Um, 
guideline is not a guideline, it's a consensus statement, which means that you are <clears throat> um, using uh, different types of research just to, uh, to pick up the points regarding the anticoagulation. And the, and the bottom line is that there is a, a very nice good 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 news that in all superficial nerve blocks, whatever the patient having coagulopathy or whatever type of anticoagulant, you are free to use the nerve. nerve. So there's no contraindications. Okay. So if, for example, if you do ASP, so superficial blocks, things like the ASP, things like the interscaling block, things like the all superficial type of block, block whatever is the patient even INR, whatever warfarin. Dual antibiotics, just use whatever you can, or even with the catheter. In okay. the deeper blocks, <clears throat> there is some concerns. The American Society of Regional Anesthesia they consider in the deeper blocks like the neuroaxial. So if you if you avoiding the the um, avoiding the uh, the neuroaxial anesthesia for uh, dual antibiotics, exactly the same like the uh, like the dual blitz. And there is two major points. First is the vertebral canal hematoma. So you are getting worried about the Block. That's why there's a bad repetition of a fantastic, brilliant block, which is the part of it, um, which is about the lumbar plexus block. But unfortunately, the lumbar plexus is close to the neuro axis. So if you're doing a lumbar plexus, you are more likely you have a catastrophic cardiac arrest secondary to injection of local anesthetic in this place. The second is the doing the block in a deeper in, uh, planes where there is injection of local anesthetic close to the vest. So you have an injury. To the, the vessel in a deeper plane can cause hematoma or can cause bleeding. And this hematoma, surprisingly, there is a report of death related to retributinial hemorrhage, uh, yes. bleeding secondary to lumbar plexus block. Yes. Um, yes. And, and, and the bleeding is, is very rare, uh, even with a coagulopathy, and um, um, it can happen, it can be manifested with a low hemoglobin or even hypotension but it's very, very rare. And um, so in the, this is the kind of regulation. So I'm just going to send it to you. It's, quite, it's, it's a big guy, document and consensus, but it's really, really good. And there is an app. So they have the, the, the just yesterday, they, they produced an application app in iPhone and in Android, where you can see what the type of network and what the type of, um, yeah. um, <clears throat> if you're a new exit and it's easy. Yeah. Good. So, is it? It is a matter of uh, uh, of uh, accessibility. Is it accessible? This region is accessible or not? Yeah. Uh, we can we can do compression or not? The Absolutely. hematoma will be obvious or yes. not? Yes. So more that's, tissue that's, trauma. That's, more deep is more tissue trauma. I suppose yeah, yeah. Dr. Mohammed uh, think of that. More yeah. more deep the deeper the the nerve, we will have more tissue trauma and we, we may have uh, the hematoma or the compression. Yeah. Correct. Whatever. Exactly. Uh, like the person mentioned, is is about the compressibility. If you are if you have a structure compressible, if you have an interscaline, um, uh, um, I, I don't know if I have the. Um, um, I have a, a very nice uh, uh, picture about the patient who had the interscreen catheter with the hematoma. So if the hematoma happened here, you can just compress it. But if the hematoma yes. happened in the subclavian or in the, in the axillary or one of the big okay. vessels, or even a small vessels, you, yes. you can't control it. Is apparent. It is apparent. Yeah. It's absolutely. apparent, not hidden by the retroperitoneal or yes. et cetera. Yeah, yes. exactly. So, so it was uh, so a lot of effort for you, Prof. Muhammad, and uh, we uh, thank you. Yeah. Many, many, thank you many, many times um, for uh, your effort. Uh, you pay more and more. Uh, thank you. Uh, if anyone in the floor have a question. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, I have a, <laughs> I have a question for you, Dr. Mohammed. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you, did you start to change your mind regarding using the uh, peripheral nerve blocks or the newly advanced interfacial, interfacial blocks? Because you know, as as you know, the interfacial blocks is a very simple blocks away yeah. from the nerve itself. So the the uh, peripheral nerve injuries are uh, seldom to happen with that uh, regard. Actually, regard for me, I'm starting to change my mind. Yeah. I'm not doing the peripheral nerve blocks uh, uh, unless is it it is uh, indicated or it uh, it would be helpful for such patients. But most of the patient I'm, I'm, I'm doing for them the interfacial blocks, the different interfacial blocks regarding the trunk or the lower limbs or the upper limbs. Yeah. So what's your practice now? Or did you change your they, mind? Uh, well, doctor, uh, uh, we say it's the, 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 the fascial, uh, fascial blame blocks, uh, they are brilliant. They are fantastic. 
it, it's not only about me, it's about all the anesthetists you know, all around the world. They, they change their practice uh, based on the safety approach. So the safety approach. So if I'm uh, having a press or rib fracture, so the, the, if you're doing an erector spiny blame block or a continuous catheter, is much safer, much easier, and much better for the patient than you doing a part of a tibial. Yeah. However, however, there's still <clears throat> a nasty uh, um, explo exploitation of the fascia for designing different names and different plots. So uh -huh. now you have every day you will find a different. So coming from the right, coming from the left, coming from above, down. So you have yeah, yeah. Unless, uh, until recently, this is what's highlighted. Actually, I'm mean, interested. So there's there an Indian group. They are very good, very excellent. They're doing a fantastic regional anesthesia in the Nganga Hospital. And they have a publication about, so I'm just interested, you started to read it. And, uh, and the, it's called a CAPS block. So it's called CAPS. So I don't know what's course linking. So some come quite complication. So I just tried to read and I found out this is a popliteal set. So it's exactly so popliteal. So he's describing a popliteal but from the medial side. So yeah. he called it the caps block. And then the same group, they done something is called is eye back. So I do high back. And oh. I do some, some <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, this right, kind of structure, right. which is makes it, <laughs> makes it, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, yeah. If, you, if you have, uh, there's a lot of, and the problem that the point is, um, uh, uh, I can use the ultrasound and you try to scan the muscle and I can get from the media or to lateral and I can see this, can call this Muhammad block or just whatever. But the, these people who designed these blocks made a big effort in the cadavers. And I've and I, and I, and I, and I been in touch with uh, some of them who are actually working for uh, months and months on cadavers in the cadaver lab, doing a lot of studies on, uh, on, on how the dynamic of the injection flow and started going through that. It's not an easy. So sure. things like an ASP, uh, guys like Sforero in South America, he's, he, he stayed for, for, a, for a year and two or like two years for investigating the effect of the blocking neuropathic pain. Mm -hmm. so it's, not, it's not an easy process, something which is quite difficult and how, is, how this can, and this actually is quite important question because this is what irritated the, 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 the researchers to, to make a new statement Again, this was a couple of months, two months back. It was released. It's called the nomenclature of regional anesthesia. The change. So this is an international guideline by all experts around the world changing. So there is no more someone is called PIX1 and PIX2 and PIX3 and PIX4 and PIX5. Nothing. So now there is a one name, one name or two names for different type blocks, and that's it. So there is nothing called quadrislamborum one and quadrislamborum. This is the lateral. There's uh, until until the issue. The, the, to the level that you get uh, the, the, the quadrislamborum tree into tequila block. So it is called the tequila. So uh, a bing block. So it just, you know, it's this kind of thing which is makes, um, makes the course. But, but again, the fascia, the fascia blame block is quite interesting. I personally, um, I'm quite big fan of the erectus spiny block. They've been used for, uh, um, uh, I'm against extra usage of it for different uh, side, but they are very good. In, in, in the back, in spine surgeries, in the rib fractures, in breasts. Um, uh, things like cordis lumborum, they are very good blocks. Uh, things like the fascia iliaca, they are very good blocks. The parasternal blocks, things like for mediastinotomy or thoracotomy. Uh, okay. These type of facial blame blocks, they are premium. They are very good and they true. Okay. Uh, so I changed my practice. I don't remember when the last time I, I inserted the thoracic epidural. I just stopped doing it. I stopped doing part of the table unless I really needed it. I just do facial blame blocks because you do the job. So the, why I go and bother and just about seeing the ne needle going into close to the brew and that's it. Yes. Yep. You are right, um, Dr. Mohammed. تعبنا الدكتور محمد يرسام حرام علينا حرام علينا ونشفنا احنا وي ار انجوينج والله وي ار انجوينج ليت مي محمد ليت مي ذات از يعني ان ده كان سيمبوزيوم الحقيقه عن السيفتي اوف ريجنال اناتيزيا وان حضرتك يعني صنعت كما يصنع العازف المحب لمعزوفته الجميله وحضرتك فعلا دي معزوفه جميله دي اوركسترا كامل عن الريجنال اناتيزيا يعني ويل ويل ديفايند تو ذا بوينت ابديتد فيري جود ليت مي تو سيمرايز بريفلي وات يو وات اي 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 ليرن فروم يو توداي ذات وي شود بي ا هيوميتيريان بيفور دوينج ا بلوك وي شود 
uh, deal with the patient if he will, if this block will be beneficial for him or not. So the comorbidity and the type of surgery will influence our block. We should, uh, uh, we should deal with the guidelines as regard to the comorbidities, the anticoagulant, et cetera, uh, before doing uh, the regional technique. Of course, age and comorbidity influence the safety of regional anesthesia. Of course, guidelines of infection control influence the uh, safety of regional anesthesia, presence of uh, uh, presence of um, uh, 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 many diseases or uh, neuropathic or uh, uh, such cases may influence our uh, safety. Uh, of course, uh, psychological and the main, uh, psychological and post cognitive dysfunction or etc. may influence our safety during our work. So very very fine lecture, very fascinating lecture. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyone can do like you. Prof. Mohammed, this is your uh, brand, and uh, and you stream it very easily, simply, fruitfully. We enjoying every minute. No one distract distract his attention from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Dr. Wissam. It's really, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> personally, I'm just, I'm, 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 ان شاء الله بقى باشا الاول مره واخر مره باذن الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله حضرتك تكون معانا على طول ان شاء الله على طول ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ان شاء الله يا دكتور محمد ان شاء الله شكرا على هذا العزف الرائع يا دكتور محمد شكرا, شكرا جزيلا لكن يا دكتور محمد وان شاء الله نبقى يعني ان ان كونتاكت على طول ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ولا معاكم انتوا الاثنين مش معنى ان الاثنين في الريست بالسب سبيشاليتي انكم تدخلوني بره الشات روم بتاعتكم لا يا دكتوره العفو العفو يا دكتوره صفاء حضرتك اي ام ويز يو <تصفيق> شكرا جدا يا دكتور محمد شكرا سعيده لحضرتك وثانك يو بصراحه يعني شكرا جدا لكل الاتنتيز الاتنتيز يا دكتوره صفاء و... ويا رب ان شاء الله يكونوا استمتعوا وطبعا يعني احنا كلنا والله استفدنا من ال... من الليكشر العظيمه دي حقيقي حقيقي ويا رب ان شاء الله for for more ان شاء الله احنا سجلناها وهي هتبقى ديليفرد على الجروب عشان الناس اللي كان عندهم ظروف النهارده عشان الامتحان بتاع بعد بكره أيوة. وفي ناس ما قدرتش فانا ان شاء الله سجلناها وبعد اذن حضرتك يا دكتور محمد هنديليفر ات على الجروب ان شاء الله متشكره جدا لحضرتك شكرا جزيلا تعبك ونشف ولو كان بايدي كنت قدمت لك فنجان القهوه دلوقتي نهار ابيض يا دكتور سامحني والله ده واجب علينا والله الله يخليك ربنا يخليك ربنا يخليك شكرا جزيلا للجميع شكرا جزيلا دكتور محمد شكرا دكتور صفاء شكرا مساء شكرا السلام عليكم السلام السلام